Okay, so what's the investiture controversy? 1076. This is when we when we talk about Gregory, this is usually the thing he's most well known for. But I've tried to give more context to the whole surrounding story and I without just telling the story. So now as we go into tell the story, is hopefully you've got a little bit more context to why this is so important. So keep in mind, again, it's one of the things I keep reiterating, Clooney's break from secular rule. Also keep in mind that surrounding degradation on the episcopy at large throughout Europe. So you've got Gregory, who is part of this reform movement. And he's he's raised on it. And he's 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 got the zeal, the paint the Saint Peter Damien, the the the, the Clooney zeal to, to reform the degradation that had been taking place in the episcopacy. And one of the things that they see that they go after is that they're noticing it's during this time that lay officials, that is secular rulers, the lords, even the kings, are investing bishops. That is, they are choosing bishops and they are, by, by investing, we mean the, the vestments that the bishop wears, right? So when you're invested, that's basically giving you your office. Now, the question that I would ask is, was that a necessary evil in times of distress? And I think you can make the case that it was. So that's so so again, I'm not going to completely knock that there may be at a time, especially when the papacy is so degraded and the episcopacy is in such such bad shape that somebody has to invest the clergy and the bishops. And the 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 secular rulers stepping into that position was was a necessary thing for the evils of the times. But the sale of the offices was easy to abuse, as you can imagine, right? It was known that, you know, these these some of these dioceses were very, very wealthy. And to get your man in as the bishop of that diocese, you could have a lot of pull and influence. So it led to a lot of corrupt practices, as well as the office, offices themselves just being puppets for the local rulers. So that's that's sort of the context of this, right? So Gregory, part of this reform movement, is trying to reverse all of that and put the investing of bishops back into the power of the church, in particular the church in Rome, the papacy, under the headship of this reforms. And so upon hearing that Henry is investing bishops, Gregory sends reforming legates to Germany. Now, moving forward, if some of this ever gets confusing, and this is something I had to keep complexities of what Gregory is trying to navigate here are the very first thing that Gregory is responsible for is he's responsible as a bishop to forgive um, penitents if their actions. So he, he's responsible for forgiveness of the people that are involved in this process. So if his actions get a little confusing moving forward, just keep that. That's his number one job. It's not political maneuvering. It's not even the reform. It's the, it's the salvation of souls. So in 1075, Gregory holds a synod in Rome, and officially, lay investiture is condemned. Now, Henry responds by expelling some claimant bishops in Milan and sets up his own. So there's two claimant bishops in Milan. Henry expels them both and sets up his own bishop. Now, it's possible that he did this not necessarily to challenge Gregory, it might even be likely because there are some local rulers who are tired of the dispute between these two claimants that are appealing to Henry to solve it, which was the way things had always been done, right? These local rulers are like, hey, we don't we don't turn to the Pope for this, we turn to Henry. That's that's as far as we can as far as we know, that's the way things have been done. And who's this guy, Gregory, down in Rome telling us what to do? So to give Henry his fair shake here, he 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 very well may just you know, he's like, look, I I don't want to excite these people in Milan. I want them to quiet down. I am going to set up my own guy. So, but Gregory is moving forward with the reforms and whether it's well-intentioned or not well-intentioned, he responds by sending a letter of rebuke to Henry. Now, at this point, we can see it's going to be a little bit of back and forth and the escalation. And I don't want to act like I do believe that 
and we the 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 testament of his life leading up to this proves the saintly life that Gregory had led. But I do think that he maybe had made some mistakes in this back and forth leading up to this. Could he have handled things a little bit better? You know, in hindsight, maybe. But at the same time, I understand again the 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 as as deeply rooted as the corruption was. You know, these are not normal times. So maybe his zeal was necessary. You know, it's 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 a hard thing to navigate. So I try to give I try to give credence to both sides here. So but in turn, so so the Pope is respond by rebuking Henry. Henry responds by holding a synod in Worms, a, a diet in Worms. This may sound familiar, uh, in which Gregory is declared a false monk, quote unquote false monk. This is what the this is what the prelates at the synod declare, and this is you know. Keep in mind, guys, this is long in the making. This is not all the result of just these two men. These reforms had been underway for a long time. The corruption had been taking place for a long time. So it was bound to happen that eventually the two top dogs were going to get into a fight. As the reform made its way to Rome, and as the, as Rome became part of the reforming movement, you're bound to have some reactions from the secular rule at any given time. And here you have two very strong headed people in two positions of power. And Gregory sees the emperor as something of the old regime protecting, you know, corrupt married or simoniacal priests. Henry sees the Pope as this sort of radical who's also inciting the passions of the people to rebel against the secular rule. So this all culminates. Gregory responds to the synod in Worms by excommunicating all the bishops involved and by deposing Henry and declaring his subjects dissolved of their loyalty to them. And that's a radical step, okay? This, this is a radical step where the papacy is getting involved in expelling the rule of local sovereigns. So this, this, this is where I say we can we can see that that the cooler heads are not prevailing at this moment. But in a Roman synod, a king, a king's man speaking on behalf of Henry declares Gregory, quote, no pope. And a mob, a pro-Gregory mob, if you will, tries to descend on him and kill him. So it's just to show you it's not completely flair tempers. Gregory protects the man by literally putting himself between the man and the mob. Okay, so it's not it's not just that 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 you know, I do believe that Gregory is a holy man in all of this. And I think his navigating of this is sometimes questionable but his holiness is unquestionable. And at the same time, Henry is excommunicated. Now this sort of shows the shifting tides of, of, this, of the time because he couldn't necessarily have predicted that this and Gregory couldn't necessarily have predicted this, but public support for Henry in Germany and all throughout Europe, once it's lost, I mean, the, the people know that this is a reformed papacy. It's been underway for some time now and to lose, to be excommunicated by the Pope um, Henry's um, support starts to decrease drastically. So in secret, Henry makes his way to the Pope in a town called Cano, where he, he famously takes off his shoes and puts on a woolen shirt and for three days stands outside of the castle imploring forgiveness of the Pope. And this is the scene here. I chose this image because I believe this is actually from a, a English propaganda piece, because if you see here, You've got the poor, you've got the poor Henry the Fourth with no shoes and his wife and child no shoes, and they look really sad. And then you've got some mocking prelates there up in the tower looking down on poor Henry. And way there in the background, you've got Gregory the Seventh with a lady in his lap. So it's 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 implying here, and it says image of Antichrist, right? Because that's what the that's what the Anglican reformers thought that the, the papacy was. And that's kind of what the Anglican that's what the reformers in general think of. Gregory the seventh, but to 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 give their their again their sides their due, what's what's what actually is the situation there? So why was Eve Gregory even in Canosa? So the the reason he is in there instead of Rome is because word gets to him that Henry was on his way. And if you're the Pope and you hear that the Emperor's on his way, you might be a little suspicious. And you know, so Gregory assumes that there's treachery and he flees Rome. The people in Rome and throughout the Italian peninsula that Henry runs across, there's actually many of them do offer to help Henry against the Pope, but Henry refuses. 
He refuses to 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 take an army against the Pope. He's he's come he's coming to the Pope to for this reason of begging for forgiveness. Now here's the deal. While it seems from and in many ways was a victory for the papacy in a long run, the immediate in the immediate it was a brilliant shrewd move by Henry because even though Gregory could rightly doubt Henry's motives for this, you know, is is Henry truly a penitent and is he repentant of of his sins? Gregory, as a bishop, especially as the bishop of the of the the, the, ch the Church of Rome, must accept Henry as a penitent. He absolutely has to, which in turn brings Henry back into the church. He ha he has to, he has to lift the excommunication. So. Gregory doing this, I think, if this were sheerly political maneuvering on the part of Gregory, I think he would have handled it much differently. Because while it was in the long term a victory for the papacy, just the optics of the fact that you have an emperor standing out in the cold, because that's another thing to keep in mind. This was one of the, this was a winter for the records in Italy. It was one of the coldest winters on records in the Middle Ages that Henry is standing outside of this castle imploring the pope with no shoes for three days begging for forgiveness so you know gregory could have used that to his political advantage he doesn't and in many ways it leads to his his demise now he dies in exile some years later but the the the, the events of his papacy were never as hard um hitting as they were in the beginning here so while it's a political defeat for gregory it's actually a spiritual victory for the church at large and the it has ramifications for the papacy throughout the Middle Ages and up to today, because while the investiture controversy wasn't settled at this event, it really begins. I mean, just the way that Germany and Europe reacted to the Pope excommunicating Henry, that's going to have ramifications later where papal power becomes much, much more solidified and has a much more control over European politics in the coming centuries 